Right now, some people think this is a decadent way of life. I can't recommend. I, I mean, you can't I cannot recommend decadence as a way, way of, of life, life, but it works for but you. It works for me. <laughs> <laughs> it works for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> And decadence has worked for me for 35 years. I was lucky. I turned being a biker into a profession. When I was young, I never dreamed I would be a biker. But when I was in my 20s, I found that this way of life was what I loved. I spent those years traveling the highways of America on a Harley Davidson, living outside the rules of polite society. The parties, the women, and the camaraderie. It gave me all I could ever dream of. So I entered the world of the American outlaw which was the last vestige of freedom in a very oppressive society. In the early 70s, I worked with Daredevil Evil Knievel as his bodyguard and traveling companion. It was just a little before his famous Snake River Canyon jump that I started in the publishing business with a little local newspaper called Biker News, which later became Biker Magazine. This was an outlaw publication showing the lifestyle of the biker. My real name is Robert Lipkin, but my club name was Bob Bitchin, and that is the name I still write under. During my life as a biker, I entered the world of tattoos, which is a subculture very close to outlaw bikers. Because of this, I soon created Tattoo Magazine, which became even larger than the biker magazine. In the magazines and the books that I wrote, I told the real stories of the outlaw biker. I was the publisher of Biker and Tattoo Magazines. But I also had been editor of Chopper Magazine, Big Bike Magazine, and had worked with Easy Rider, Street Chopper, Cycle World, and Cycle News. I was the founding president of the Motorcycle Press Association and one of the original board members of Abate, a legislative organization which has become the largest motorcycle organization in the world. I remained Bob Bitchin, but the lifestyle of Bob Bitchin changed. I left the highways to take to the seas. I found that after 20 years of riding across the continent, the thrill and adventure were gone. I found more excitement in sailing the seas between them. Even though the mode of transportation has changed, I kept the same feeling of freedom. Since then, the sea has become my universe. The vessel I chose for this was truly the Harley Davidson of the sea, a 68-foot catch that started life named Fair Weather, but soon became the lost soul. She'd been abandoned in the South Pacific for seven years, but when I found her, in just one year of hard work, we made her new again. I kidnapped Jody, the bartender at the Portofino Marina, and set sail for the seven seas of the world. The fulfilling thing about being out here in your own boat, being the captain, is that you're in control. And out here, if you screw up, you screw up. You don't come back. Uh, we've done, in the last four years, over 50,000 miles, which means we're doing something right because we're not dead yet. Uh, hang on, we're going sideways here. And. Uh, Play with that one again. Our aim is to sail the world, but not to do a circumnavigation like other folks. We want to go where we want, when we want. We sailed the South Pacific for a year and a half, and then sailed home for a couple of months to make our friends really jealous. Then it was off to sea again this time south. We headed south through Mexico and Costa Rica and then on to the Panama Canal. We sailed the Caribbean and Atlantic and then into the Mediterranean where we spent six great months. Then we sailed back across the Atlantic to the Caribbean for a leisurely Caribbean cruise. Welcome to Dominica. Thank you. This is Alex, Alexis. He's uh, gonna be our boat boy came out five miles to meet us. 
Where is a good place to anchor? Okay. Hey, Dad. This is the port. And, uh, park. Stand by. Drop it. work here so first you have to go to the custom first so I take you to the custom okay. get all the passports okay. papers for the boat okay. then I take you to the custom and then we got the Indian River you get the island tour I get my taxi and my boat I can take you to the river so everything okay um, like if we want to get some fruit should we buy from these guys so, yeah. and my friends on the other side have fruits you got that's me yeah, I'm running yeah. for yeah. yeah. some lovely bananas and oranges and grapes Okay. Uh, let's just hang on just a minute. Let me get the uh, passports and everything. Yeah, welcome to the Nature Island, man. This is the Nature Island of the Caribbean. I think we're going to like it. Sure, it is beautiful. It's a beautiful place, but you have to come at the right time. As you can see here, the remnants of Hurricane Lewis is a grim reminder of what can happen to even the largest ship if they linger. So this boat over there, these are two anchors in the sea. Yeah. And then the sea was so high, like 10 feet high, the sea. Yeah. How long have you lived here? All your life? Yeah, all my life. I like it here, you know, it's so quiet, you know. It's natural, you get whatever you want. You know, fresh fruits, no problem. They have pirate flag? Pirate flag? The skull and crossbones? I think, yeah. We need, we have to buy one. Yeah. Our old one is too old. Yeah. Well, begin. The Lord made the earth, the heavens, the hills, and the seas. Then he created the sun and the stars, the land of birds. As we sail the world, we search for undisturbed paradise pristine places untouched by the corrupting hand of civilization. I think that is why Dominica will always remain one of our favorite stops. In an archipelago that is otherwise overrun with tourism, this one island has managed to maintain her individuality and rustic charm. It contains the last vestiges of the once strong Carib tribe that gives the Caribbean its name it is now just a few Indians living at the top of the virgin green forest. They guard savagely what the island has to give, a beauty untouched and an Eden that has never been discovered. Being in the center of this paradise made us truly feel as if we had found the paradise we were searching for. But because we're nothing, more than human Sometimes we stumble Sometimes we fall While cruising I try to keep in practice with my writing by working on a newsletter. Jody is usually busy around the galley. She makes fresh bread and does a lot of experimenting with local recipes. The newsletter started going out to about 30 people and now goes to over 300 friends around the world. Part of the paradise of cruising is meeting new people, many of whom become lifelong friends. My first experience at sea was on a square rigged topsail schooner named the Stone Witch. It had no motor or electronics and used kerosene running lights. Her auxiliary power consisted of four 21-foot oars, but she had character. She was built and captained by Alan Olson out of San Francisco, who taught me the art of navigation. 
In the years since then, I've tried to pass on this knowledge to other young sailors who sometimes crew with us on long journeys. A big part of the beauty of cruising is the freedom to just pick up anchor and sail off to new frontiers. I find a great thrill in planning and crossing to a new island or harbor. With the advent of the new GPS system, many new boaters avoid using charts, but I like to see where I'm headed on a chart first and then plot it on my GPS. Okay, now once you've entered your waypoint, you hit your navigate button and you take it to waypoint 4, which is what we've just entered. And it says that it's 85.8 miles on a 155 heading. That's your range and bearing to get to the point. This uh, tells you when you're underway how fast you're going, the speed, and your course, which would be the course you're actually making over the ground. Then it also tells you how long it will take you to get there at the current speed and what time you will arrive there. Um, that's why everybody loves the GPS so much. Actually, we carry one GPS here, one GPS down in the nav station, and another handheld GPS to back it up in case our electronics go out. And if that goes out, we've got a sat nav, which is the old satellite navigation system. And if that goes out, I have a sextant. And if that goes out, we just drift until we hit land. Cincinnati Philharmonic Orchestra, directed by Kunzel. It's a selection of nothing but sailing songs. It's really good. The thrill of planning and accomplishing a voyage gives me a real kick. In my previous life, I did a lot of drugs. Drugs give you a false euphoria created by the chemicals. The more artificial stimulation I had, the more it took to make the juices flow. I discovered that the great feeling I used to get by accomplishing something could no longer be felt naturally. The drugs deadened my feelings. Since I stopped doing these chemicals, I can once again enjoy the small wonders and thrills. I stopped doing drugs over 10 years ago, and it was a good thing. Most of my old friends are dead or in prison now. Sailing saved my life. So this morning we fixed the bilge pumps. This morning we fixed the leak in the generator. And we tried to fix the exhaust leak on the main engine, but it didn't work. So now we take it apart again and fix it again. You have probably heard before that cruising is just fixing or repairing your boat in new and exotic places. Well, that couldn't be more true. And it's expensive, too. Here we are fixing a broken exhaust elbow that gave out after 3,000 miles. You have to be self-sufficient and as ingenious as MacGyver sometimes. You also need a lot of money. For example, our generator started giving us trouble in the med, and by the time we reached the Caribbean, we spent over $7,000 trying to fix it. I say trying because it never worked right again. Some jobs are even more unpleasant than others, like when the head breaks. There's no one else to do the job, so you do it yourself, no matter how crappy a job it is. place we could go in here. We could drop next to that little 30-footer behind the blue boat. It's a custom 80. See it up there? Right in front of the blue boat. Uh, yeah. Okay, if we go up and drop near him. He's in there. We can get in there. Yeah, he's 80 feet. Got 
As we travel, we look for the most interesting and pristine anchorages. We usually don't stay anywhere more than four or five days. During that time, we try to meet as many new and interesting people as we can. In the cruising community, you keep running into old friends in new places. But it's more than meeting other cruisers. The people we meet on the islands and in ports are sometimes extremely interesting. While anchored in the Grenadines, we ran into Athenel Olivier, who has opened a small museum dedicated to the hunting of the whale by hand. He is one of the last men on earth who actually hunts the whale from a small sailing vessel. At 67, he still does it the old-fashioned way. He jumps out of a small sailboat onto the whale's back to thrust the spear deep to kill the huge whale by hand. He is very proud and probably the last man who will ever hunt the whale in this manner, as he can't find any young men to train. You're trying to get this to pass, the bones are going in your heart. And if the time you get it clear, the bones are going in your heart, you keep punching them up and down until you get. So but the whale is going and coming and with your, your head on something, my head out of water. I've got to ask you, how does it feel standing on the back of a whale? I don't study nothing. No. <laughs> There's nothing at all. Right. I'm only trying to, to kill it. Well, no, I mean, that is no point. That opened the kill me, I don't open the kill that. Right. Watching this whale coming head on to you in that small boat. You have to jump, drop the harpoon and jump overboard yeah. if you're caught. So you really have to be brave. While I look for interesting people, a lot of folks think that I'm the interesting one. It might have something to do with the fact that I'm six foot four, weigh 350 pounds, and I'm covered with pictures. I end up in a lot of local newspapers. The motorcycle world that I was involved with is probably one of the most violent worlds that you can be in. Um, and cruising has got to be one of the mellowest. Mm -hmm. However, sailing, not sailing, but cruising, is 90% sheer boredom and 10% sheer terror. <laughs> and you cannot control when terror is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what gets the juices flowing. The fact that when you get through it, you did it. One of the highlights of cruising is when you run into old cruising friends in new ports. You cram months of exciting stories into one or two evenings. These meetings will remain with me the rest of my life. We ran into Chris and Alita first in Puerto Rico seven months earlier. On our meeting in Bequia, we relived our European cruise and they their Venezuelan adventure. We dove, caught some fresh lobster, and deepened our friendship. I don't care how the weather rain points when the weather rain points too gloomy. It's got to be sunny to me when your eyes look into mine. Oh, jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those beepers? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those eyes? Oh, gosh, I'll get up. I'd get so lit up. Gosh, I'll get up. I'd get that size. Oh, Golly gee, when you turn the heaters on, who oh, is me? Got to put my cheaters on. Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those peepers? Oh, those weepers, hot hypnotized, yes. Where'd you get those eyes, geek? Where'd you get those eyes, satch? Where'd you get those eyes? He doesn't look happy. Well, we're gonna get a hat for you. If the water is boiling, then you do it for five minutes. If it's not, it's only one minute. Yeah, it's hot enough, man. It's hot enough. Hey, that's good. It's okay. I like it. It's crushed. Wow. Oh, my God. 
Ali. Okay, this is the catch of the day. He's got his rabies. Grab his uh, tag, huh? Yeah. All right, here yeah, well, we That's almost what you became today, mate. Dip, dip, dip. That's how you catch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catch it with your hand. This is cut up. Well, it's two of them, a small one, this one. This one gave me enough first time with you. Because of this lifestyle, the people you beat become very close in a short time. Chris and Alita, though we only spent three days with them in Puerto Rico, and four or five in the Grenadines, they became like family, and it was very difficult to say goodbye. As we hoisted anchor and set sail, it hurt a little, knowing it would be years before we'd ever see them again. And what we got here is we got two ways to go around these rocks out here. There's the way everybody does it. And there's the Lost Soul Way. There's a narrow channel between the reef and the rocks that can be navigated by by a boat. It's a very good channel. The other way would be very easy to do. So we need to get our juices flowing because we have been relaxing too long in back way and getting stale fixing generators and outboard motors. Before we hit it, we will be making a slight turn to the west. I love boats. Yeah, you see, um, we're coming into here. Now, if you're not into reality, we're coming into here, which is here. Which is here. You see? So that way we can't get lost. We know exactly where we are because we are here, which is here. So that reef is here, which is here. See, we know this. Now, wasn't that fun, boys and girls? No, because we've hit bottom a few times and I know what it feels like and it's really scary. We've had people on the bow going through passes, looking, you know, to make sure we don't hit and we still hit because sometimes you can't tell how deep the water is even though it looks deep enough, depending on the clarity of the water. It's just, it's scary. It's, <laughs> you know, you always hope you're not gonna hit, but, and most of the time we don't. We've only hit three times. <laughs> so, and we made it this time. It's good. When you live a life like this, it's very hard to keep finding excitement. When you live an adventure all the time, it takes more and more to get the old juices flowing. For the person who works nine to five in a regular job, two weeks in Hawaii is exciting. But to somebody who lives as a beach boy in Waikiki, nothing could be more boring. Most people take the easy way of life, not the most exciting. To leave everything, take a chance, is difficult at best. But the rewards are unbelievable. And you have to take the time to appreciate it. I am fortunate. I have a small income from a smoke and gift store I'm a partner in, but I also have an interest in a small jewelry business. While I sail the world, I try to come up with new nautical designs for the jewelry. What do you think, Jody? Would you like a longer bowling for an earring or a shorter one? I think I'd like it just a little bit shorter. 
Not much, just a little. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'll put a hook right here. Okay, that's enough work for today. That will be our new earring in our line, a bowling earring. I don't want to be a millionaire. I just want to live like one. Um, and that's, that's really the important thing is not having the money. It's having enough money to get you into a lifestyle that you want. But people who are a slave to money, I, I feel sorry for. People who have millions of dollars in the bank and keep working because they want more money in the bank. If that's what makes them happy, more power to them. But if they're just doing it to amass more and more money, why are they doing it? Why not go out and enjoy what you have? I think it's more important to enjoy what you have than to have what you want. Jody and I live a very low-stress life. That doesn't mean we have no goals. I've always been an entrepreneur, and I've always managed to make a living doing what I like. I don't know if this is because I've been lucky or because I just couldn't imagine doing it any other way. However, I am a goal-oriented person. I just keep setting new goals. As cruisers, we can never run out of goals because our goal is to see the world, and that could take three or four lifetimes. We can sail where we want and when we want. For a lot of people, they need the day-to-day -day life they live in a secure environment. But I feel security like that would be pure hell. People who are in prison are very secure. They know where every meal is coming from and what they'll be doing all the time. I don't think I could settle down anywhere, even in Mexico, a place that I love. I have sailed the coast of Mexico for over 20 years, and though I love the people and feel comfortable in their cities, I couldn't imagine trying to settle down here any more than I could anywhere else. My paradise is the journey, not the end of it. I'm not in a search for the perfect place. Cruising, is, it's just like life. It's not the end that's important. It's the journey that gets us there. land for the lost soul. Say when you need it. I hate boats. <laughs> We usually try to stay in the smaller and less civilized towns and villages because we find the people are friendlier and the water cleaner. But sometimes you have to head into the larger cities to stock up on the necessities, to work on the boat, and to have our mail forwarded to us. 
On the west coast of Mexico, our favorite stop is Puerto Vallarta, where I've been stopping for years. The manager of the marina, Carl Raggio, has been a friend for over 10 years. He lets us forward our mail to him, and he holds it for our arrival. It's always a good feeling, like coming home, when I call him on the radio to tell him we're arriving. The downside is that it costs a lot of money to stay at a marina, but occasionally it's nice to be spoiled. After all, decadence is a way of life. We have friends back in Redondo Beach who collect our mail for us and send it on to us. The big problem we hit sometimes is customs. This mail we received in February was our Christmas mail. Customs stopped it because there were videotapes from home along with a part that we were waiting for, and believe it or not, some cookies. They sent the part and videos back to the States, ate the cookies, and sent the rest of the mail on to us. Yo, dudes. Hello. How you doing? So you made it. Yeah. Yeah, got it. Congratulations! Well, thank you. Well. Yeah. <laughs> we scrubbed it, scrubbed it all down in the whole shot. Just because 40, 42,000 miles. There are people <laughs> who are not going to believe that you made it. Uh huh. Okay, so. Whoa! Certificate of Circumnavigation, Yacht Panderosa. Face the world from east to west and find the path that thrills you best. <laughs> Never quit the search and seeking, dare to live with adventure reeking. All the way your vessel true, rail to rail or plowing through. <laughs> uh, onward through the seas that swell. Some say heaven, some say hell. Exactly. <laughs> and Panderosa still came through. No, I knew it! You guys are terrible! I told you! <laughs> This is from the Voodoo Queen. <laughs> Every island we went to, we kept finding baby legs. They protected them. They collected them. I couldn't believe it. In contrast to the city of Puerto Vallarta, just a day sail away lays the arid island of Isabella. This is a stark paradise where the frigate bird and the booby coexist and come to mate and raise their young. It's a nature preserve so interesting that Jacques Cousteau did a documentary here, and naturalists live on this semi-barren rock to study. It's a soothing place where you can go to feel the rhythm of life. Traveling gives you an insight into nature, where you can appreciate the colors of life and not just the black and white of reality, where you can smell the perfume of creation as opposed to the stink of civilization and hear the music of life instead of the noise of the city. This is paradise. This is uh, this is it right here. Just about any place that we have been, even in the worst weather. The the paradise paradise to me is is being able to have some excitement, some fulfillment, to be able to achieve something while not being forced to do anything on a regular basis. 
Um, I could no more have worked a nine to five job in my life than I could eat a Volkswagen, which some people think I could. But, uh, and as a matter of fact, the paradise is what I've been living my whole life because I've always done exactly what I wanted to do, whether it was riding motorcycles around the country or, or around the world or sailing a boat. Um, I always seem to be able to do what I want to do without too many restrictions and to me that is paradise. Restrictions are hell. Once again, we return to Redondo to make our friends jealous, but also to fill the bank account and fix the damage to the boat that 45,000 miles at sea has caused. He's home. We will spend time with our friends. I'll start a new magazine for cruisers to be called Latitudes and Attitudes. Jody will be working for our friend Kurt at his car dealership, and we'll be putting away every penny so we can once again sail out to paradise. Before we even arrived in our home port, we had made plans for our next cruise, this time to the mysterious Asian continent and to the cruising grounds of Thailand, Malaysia, and the Solomon Islands. Well, let's see if it starts. <laughs> let's get the cover off of it. While we wait for this, we once again fall into the cesspool of civilization. We only have one life, and we have to live every minute of it. My philosophy is simple. Don't dream your life, live your dream. I said before that sailing is like life, but in reality life is like sailing. It's not what you find at the end that's important. It is the journey. Enjoy the ride. I cannot recommend decadence as a way of life, but it has worked for me. range and bearing to get to the point. Okie dokie.